Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another. Oh, wow! Moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. What is molecular gastronomy? Molecular gastronomy is the scientific exploration of food preparation. Yum. Some molecular gastronomy is the same science used in nanoscale research. When we talk about nano, shorthand for nanoscience, nanoengineering, nanotechnology, we're talking about things that are really, really, really small. To get an idea, comparing a nanoparticle to your average sized child is like comparing a sugar ant to the entire state of Texas. This is a meter stick. These are millimeter lines, one one thousandth of a meter. Imagine a million lines between each of these little lines, that's a nanometer. One billionth, that's with a B, billionth of a meter. Comparing a nanometer to a meter stick is like comparing the entire Earth to a marble. Viruses are 70 nanometers long, DNA is 2.5 nanometers wide, and fingernails grow at one nanometer every second. Nano is small. But why is nano important? Well, when we get down to the nanoscale, 1 to 100 nanometers in length, things start to behave differently, and tapping into those behaviors is what is key with nanoscience research. But there are some barriers. Working with such small particles is like trying to move small metal balls off a vibrating surface using tweezers, only much harder and more time consuming. What is needed is a way to produce large quantities of very small things quickly and efficiently by having it happen automatically. Fortunately, we know someone who does it very well. Mother Nature. At this component in our Matter Factory exhibit, we demonstrate how carbon atoms can self-assemble into graphene sheets, similar to the graphite in your pencils. The key is to provide the right ingredients under the right conditions and they will form into a product. Let me show it to you a different way. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous, so always have a responsible adult helping you. We're creating a dessert topping that self-assembles in a similar process to what Rice University researchers use to create nanocapsules. The two ingredients, sodium alginate, a seaweed extract, and calcium chloride can both be purchased online through molecular gastronomy websites. Be sure to get food grade for both of these chemicals. We're going to combine one half teaspoon of food grade sodium alginate powder with one cup of water in a blender and run it until the powder has completely dissolved. Add in four tablespoons of flavoring, in this case chocolate syrup, and blend again. Pour the solution into a bowl and set it aside for about 20 to 30 minutes to let the bubbles decrease. Next we're going to pour two and a quarter cups of warm water into a second bowl and add three quarters of a teaspoon of food grade calcium chloride. Stir until it dissolves. Finally, fill a third bowl with clean water. This is the final rinse station. Here's how to make the toppings. Place a sieve into the calcium chloride solution to catch your desserts. Use a syringe to remove some of the alginate solution, then squirt it into the sieve sitting in the calcium chloride solution. You can either squirt it into the solution quickly to create more noodle-like effects, or drip it in slowly to create a more ball-like effect. You can even use a spoon to make them bigger. Try lots of different ways to create your toppings. Now just move the sieve into the water rinse, put onto your ice cream, and you're ready to go. And there you have it. The sodium alginate, when dropped into the calcium chloride, undergoes a chemical reaction, causing the alginate to self-assemble a gel-like shell around the flavoring, creating a flavor-filled casing. Sure, it took a little while, and your ice cream melted, but it's all worth it. And who says science isn't sweet? This has been another Oh Wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. <laughs>